Sean, thanks for being with us and for your work on this report. Um, can you tell us why you needed to, to do a study looking into the media coverage of unmarked graves? Yeah, I think we've seen a, a rise in residential school denialism in the past few years. And it's not that people are denying that residential schools existed, but rather trying to twist or manipulate basic facts about residential schooling to try and undermine or shake public confidence in truth and reconciliation, undermine uh, confidence in survivor testimony and truth telling. And as a, a non-Indigenous person, as a, as a settler, but as someone who has a residential school survivor in my family, I felt like I had a responsibility to counter some of this misinformation and disinformation to clear the path for, for truth and reconciliation. What do you think are some of the most important uh, findings and takeaways? Well, again, we've seen uh, in the last couple of years since the Kamloops announcement, um, a number of people that are saying that what First Nations are identifying uh, is a hoax. Uh, and this is based on an idea uh, that some reporters and, and journalists in, in May and June of 2021, when they were unsure exactly about what Kamloops and, and other First Nations like Kaosis were finding, uh, reported the findings as mass graves rather than uh, likely or potential unmarked graves. Um, and what denialists did, again, using the, the idea that they cherry pick evidence, is that they used a number of those reports to say, see, look, reporters and First Nations and the Trudeau government are, are conspiring uh, to mislead the public in thinking that uh, you know, more nefarious things are being located than, than what uh, is actually true. And again, that's a misrepresentation of the evidence. And so as this mass grave hoax narrative uh, has been gaining traction. Uh, myself and a graduate student, uh, Reed Gerbrandt, decided to investigate the claims and, and, and fact check what was going on. Uh, so, Sean, we were looking at uh, some of the international coverage this morning, CNN, The Guardian, still with stories up talking uh, about uh, mass graves. How important, I guess, from looking at all this, do you, do you think language is that's used in the reporting and, and by First Nations leaders? Right, well, I think part of the findings of the report is that we do need to be very precise in our language. Um, and that includes myself as a, a non-Indigenous historian um, commenting on, on these issues. But I think we also need to realize that denialists are trying to make people afraid of making mistakes and cherry-picking and uh, in using those mistakes uh, as a weapon to try to silence people uh, and, and to try and change the direction of the conversation to uh, to silence uh, survivors and and I think that that's what we need to understand is that people can make mistakes in journalism uh, in um, in academia make mistakes happen but we need to try to avoid them and use those mistakes as an opportunity to really help people understand what is going on. For example, uh, the Kamloops Nation never identified their findings as a mass grave. That was not a mistake that they made. Cowes' First Nation was very clear uh, that what they had uncovered was not a mass grave, but rather a large number of potential unmarked graves. And so I think we need to be very careful uh, in the language that we use and make sure that we're listening to First Nations leaders uh, when they are talking about these issues. Sean, do you think this report will do anything to sway those who continue to discredit survivors and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, some who are, are literally making a living off of this denialism? Yes, I think we're seeing in the age of misinformation the monetization of this. Uh, and I think there are a lot of people that are doing this deliberately um, you know, to pay their bills, unfortunately. But I think the, the problem is, is that people put out this misinformation, but then people pick up on it. They buy into it. They invest themselves in these ideas. And I'm, ho I'm hopeful, uh, as is Reed, uh, that our report will at least shake uh, the idea that there is a mass grave hoax, right? The, 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 the foundational claim here is that journalists almost universally reported these findings as mass graves. And our report shows that that's not the case. 93.5% of uh, articles that we looked at across five different uh, media outlets did not report uh, the findings as mass graves. And so I think continuing to advance this narrative of a mass grave hoax uh, needs to be seen for what it is, uh, which is residential school denialism uh, and mis and disinformation. 
Sean, important work from the two of you. Appreciate you taking some time to speak with us about it. Thanks so much, Dennis. I appreciate it.